Yo, YouTube, what's good? What's up? How you doing? It's another cool Saturday, early Sunday morning, and I'm going to show you, Cool Cobras, how I made that delicious dank bacon cheeseburger that I made for Darflinny. You know, the one that I made for him on my live stream? Oh, yeah. Let's grab ourselves a sip of beer. Mm. Now, I have a little bit of bacon and burger grease toasted up and ready to go into the pan. That's going to be the main part of it. I mean, you, you want to talk a lot of smack about how much grease is on the pan, but I'm like, bro... You can use that grease from your bacon and beef to cook with, dude. Come on now. Let me get that up to a seven. We'll heat her up. There we go. And while that heats up, we'll sip on some beer, smoke some pipe tobacco. Chill out for a second. Got the window open. Summertime is right around the corner. Cause I may save on that pipe tobacco until after the burger and just sip on the beer. Ha 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 ha. But you're gonna want to grab two slices of Texas toast to start off with. Put them on a nice clean plate, and then turn your stove on so that the heats up, so that the grease in your pan from the bacon and the beef and the butter melts. Then you're gonna wanna toast your bread in that. We'll get that started here in a second. We got my phone charger handy, so that way if this video happens to cut short, we ain't letting that happen. Nope. Cooking with Cobra, what's up? Mm. Seasoning is always optional, and maybe you can't afford the best or the fanciest. But the nice thing about these burgers is that they're not high-end fancy, but I can make burgers that are cheap and also very tasty. Yeah. A good seasoning on your patty makes all the difference. I mean, you could have really expensive beef, and if you season it like crap, it'll taste like crap. You know what I'm saying? So too much or too little. A little bit goes a long way. If you're already cooking the, um, <clears throat> you see now I got the stove heated up, the grease is starting to uh, heat up. Beautiful. Set the beer down. Scooch up the plate. So now we have our, um, our Texas toast. I went and grabbed up two slices of that real quick. Beautiful. Now we're gonna wanna make our burger have some firmness. We're gonna wanna give it some flavor. So I'm gonna start off with some spicy garlic seasoning. I'm gonna put a little bit on the bread. Just a little bit. that much just a little bit in the middle you know I want to drop the season side down first into our grease this pan's big enough that we can do both slices of bread now we got our Texas toast plopped in there I want to let the greasy side soak into the bottom of it all that bacon and burger grease. Throw a splash of that spicy garlic seasoning on top so that both sides are evenly seasoned. And you don't need a whole lot of seasoning, you two. Just a little sprinkle will do ya, you know. Looky right there, see that? Yeah, buddy. I'm gonna show you step by step how I made Darflinny's dank ass bacon cheeseburger, which is if you recall on my live stream, he said he gave it a seven out of 10. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. And with his palate of trying burgers, hell fucking yeah. 
so I want to show you cool cobras how to make this bomb ass burger first thing you want to do is toast up your Texas toast and your bacon and burger grease the bottom of that's going to absorb into it eventually you're going to want to flip it so that the other side can get toasted so we have our spatula and flip it real quick This is gonna be tasty. That puddle of grease that we had in the bottom of our pan, that puddle of bacon and burger grease has literally soaked into the top half of this Texas toast. That is, oh YouTube, look at that. I want to keep flipping it until it's lightly toasted, but the grease is going to be less on the other side. Now, that greasy, delicious... Whoa, shit, almost dropped the phone. There we go. We're still filming. Rock and roll. All right. That greasy, buttery center right there, that's going to be the center of our burger. Now, if I would have had beer on hand, I would have cook the beef and beer but I did not so we're gonna replicate the recipe just like I did it for my live stream scoop the camera this way there we go speaking of beer ho -ho. all right hope you cool cobras are staying safe out there in this crazy quarantine lockdown I'll go ahead and give that another flip. And check the texture on that toast action. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Fluffy, golden brown, a little bit of crisp. Oh, that is beautiful. I mean, that is just... Yes, right there. That's what you're looking for. So that bread's just about done. It's gonna be lightly toasted. That Texas toast is gonna to be lightly toasted. It's gonna to have a warm, fluffy, buttery, just crispy, slightly crispy, you know. Ooh. If you're gonna make a delicious hamburger and you don't wanna use burger patties, Texas toast is the next best thing. The bread on it is super thick. And holds together nicely when you assemble it. Oh, that is just, that's just about there, yeah. Checking the, the greasier side of it. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, all the grease from when I first started toasting that bread is literally absorbed into the bottom of it where it's toasting right now. And that bacon, that burger, and that buttery, greasy love is just going to toast right into that bun beautifully. Okay, that's going to add our first layer of flavor to the sandwich oh so nicely. Now we got the phone on airplane mode so that we can film the video and then upload it to the uh, desktop and upload it to YouTube. All right. Now I'm watching this bread like a hawk because I do not want to burn it. When you're making cooking videos for YouTube, people expect it to look delicious and, you know. Because at this point, it doesn't matter what I do, the trolls are still going to talk shit. And if you made your life just miserably talking crap on someone, you really have to stop. Now that piece is good right there. You really have to stop and ask yourself, what am I doing with my life? We'll toast that one for a little bit longer. Oh, well, that's toasting up. Look, right here, the side. This side has all the grease. This side has less of it. But all the flavor in that pan is just cooked into that bread beautifully. It's lightly toasted. 
Let's give it a flip. How's it looking? Oh yeah, that's that's tested. All right, so there's our top bun. The bottom bun right here is gonna have most of the grease because that's where the patty's gonna go. It's just how it is. It's gonna have more grease when you add to it, anyways. But um, now I'm gonna want to uh, add a beef patty to it. So I'm gonna grab the ingredients I need to make that happen. YouTube, I am going to show you Cool Cobras how I made that delicious bacon cheeseburger that you saw my buddy Darflinny eat. Next is the beef patty. We're going to use some of these right here. These are great value 100% pure beef burgers, 80% lean, 20% fat. The 12 frozen patties, which you know. Her, I like them, they're good, but you know, I say eh because of the beef snobs. People out there go, that's not a burger. They're frozen. Like, bro, calm down. This is bachelor, bachelorette cooking. This is college dorm, you know, back of your van. You're at a cookout. Kind of, you know, chill out. So, before we do anything, let's add some of this country crock butter. We'll get that here in a second. Show that logo real cranky. Yeah, buddy. Before we do that, we're going to turn the camera this way. There we go. So, I'm going to show you Cool Cobras, how I made that delicious burger for Durf Lenny on my channel. We saw it on my live stream. The pan's gonna be piping hot from toasting up them buns. So we'll take a little scoop of that butter. Drop it in the center of our pan. And use the fork to spread it around. All right. Set the fork. And right there on top for a second. Um, I'm going to take our same garlic seasoning that we used before and then a light sprinkle on the bur burger patty. I'm going to take the paper off. Drop the season side first on top of that butter. I'm going to wash my hands real quick. Booyah. Then once you got that seasoned side dropped in the butter first, then we're going to take a sprinkle of that seasoning and put just a little bit on top. Beautiful. You don't need a whole lot. Now I didn't put any seasoning on the bacon just because you don't want too much seasoning. It's a bit overpowering to be honest. So check this out. Now this is seasoning the butter right there cooking on it. Now we're going to take our fork, do a nice little dollop of butter just like that. I'm going to put it on top of here. Cell phone close-ups, man. Alright, so we're going to put that dollop of butter on the top of the burger patty, just like that. And we can reuse this fork for when we're um, in need of cooking the bacon. Mm-hmm. Now why would you need a fork if you're cooking bacon and shouldn't the spatula be enough? Oh, uh -huh, you would think, YouTube, you would think. But sometimes when you're cooking bacon, it likes to curl up on you. 
and then it doesn't get cooked right, and, there's, and then it just has this odd angle, and like, okay, you're sitting there trying to cook bacon for a burger or bacon for breakfast or whatever, and the strips don't come out straight. They're all curly and crooked and weird. They make devices for that, but I want to show you the easiest way to do it, okay? You take a fork on one end where it's all starting to curl up, and then your spatula on the opposite end, and you hold it down on opposing sides, and you let the heat of the pan straighten it out. As it cooks, it'll straighten itself out. It is, however, a two-handed process. That's what she said. Okay, that's not appropriate. Right there, let that burger cook up. And then we're going to flip it. The butter, right there, just going to melt into that patty and create a wonderful palette of flavor. Yep. After we get the burger patty cooked up, we're going to... Um, get the bacon cooked up and then we'll cut some cheese for the burger no fart jokes intended add our sauce and our Doritos and you know show you how I made this uh, this, this dank ass burger yeah I've been telling people on YouTube hey man if you want to see me make this burger you gotta stick around dude cause you know the cowboy knows how to make a dank ass burger As the burger patty is cooking on one side, the butter on top is just melting. Oh, that's beautiful. That is just beautiful. Now, the buns are already toasted in bacon and burger grease beautifully. We're going to give it a flip. Skip. Right there. Now, the top's already cooked. The bottom's gonna cook, and as that bottom cooks, that butter that we put on the top section there is gonna melt into a greasy puddle. A greasy puddle of flavor. And as it starts to melt, it'll cook the other side. All that flavor's just gonna, woof, you know. Let me give you a close up of that beef action. Look at that, YouTube. Is that just delicious looking or what? All right. If you can get these ingredients where you're at, awesome. If you can't, it's understandable. You know, sometimes stuff can be hard to come by if you're trying to survive, I guess. You know, yeah. Mm. But after the good review that I got from Darth Plenty, people are probably going to be like, okay, I got to see Cobra make it. Maybe we'll do it for a cooking video. Maybe I will. Maybe I just will. I'm going to flip it real quick and see how the other side's looking. Alright, a little bit longer on the other side, I don't want too much longer, that patty's just about done. Now as we're cooking up this beef patty and all that buttery love, we have enough grease to cook our bacon without it sticking to the pan. Because that shit's annoying when you're cooking your eggs or your bacon and the shit sticks to the pan, you're like, motherfucker. Now this will not only prevent your eggs and bacon from sticking to your pan, but add a layer of flavor that will make your taste buds sing. Yeah, and that's no bullshit. I don't want to cook it too much because I don't, you know what I'm saying, I want 
to be medium rare consistency. Okay, that's beautiful. That pattern's done. Now you're gonna see a step by step as I build this burger because that's how I roll on my channel. Oh, look at that beef patty. Ready to go. Oh yeah, buddy, that looks good. Now comes the part where we cook some bacon. But before I cook the bacon, I gotta get that pour action. Now this part of the cooking video is not required, but sometimes, sometimes you just gotta crack open a beer when you're cooking bacon because America. Rolling Rock is made in Colorado and it's been made in Colorado for generations. So, yeah. Enough said on that. Tilt, pour, and booyaka, booyaka. Can I pour this entire glass with one can? Do you think I can? I like a little engine that could. I think I can. That was a really bad pun. And sure as shit I did. So watch out. Cheers, YouTube. Hmm. Not a sponsor. Right now, y'all, this delicious bacon and burger grease just sizzling away in the pan. It smells delicious. It's got that buttery love to it. Now we're going to throw in some bacon. I'm going to tilt the camera this way a little bit. I don't have professional filming equipment, but we can make a delicious cooking video like you like, like my fans are craving. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got some Oscar Mayer thick cut bacon. Hashtag not a sponsor. And, uh, I'm going to grab a delicious strip. And with my clean hand, I'm going to open the fridge, put the bacon back. Jack. Now I'm going to have to get this hand dirty for a second. We'll have to wash it, just like we did with the beef. But, you take your bacon. Tear the strips in half to make two smaller strips. And then drop them into your frying pan. Wash the hands again. I mean, you're thinking to yourself at this point, okay, Cobra, we've seen you do this a thousand times. Bacon and beef, okay, what's new? What's new, Scooby Doo? Coming after you. What's new, Scooby Doo? No, 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 no. That's really bad. That's bad joke number two. But honestly, you cannot deny if you love bacon, you love meat, just the smell, the sizzle, the sound, the pop. Ooh. But if you're cooking bacon and buttery, greasy beef, love. It's going to pop. It's going to spit grease all over the place. So, you definitely want to wear a shirt while you're cooking bacon. I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer. But some people, like, you got to wonder, YouTube. Oh, look at that bacon sizzle. We'll give it a second before we flip it. Now the seasoning from the burger patties and the toast are already incorporated into the grease. That's why you don't really need seasoning for the bacon. Now if you're on a diet, I wouldn't watch this because I'm showing you how to make a delicious bacon cheeseburger. It's going to have a little bit of spiciness to it, but not too much. Just a little bit. Just enough to kick it up a notch. And look at that, my phone's about to die, classic. Right in the middle of cooking the bacon, even better. Okay, so we're gonna have to find a way to charge this while we're still filming it. 
Oh, crap. Yeah, that's just the nature of the game, isn't it? <laughs> so we grab my cell phone charger, and we're going to try to plug the phone in. Kind of set it up so we're still filming the cooking video while we're cooking. We don't, we don't want to miss a glorious moment of this. People are like, how did you make that delicious burger for Darth Lenny? We must know. I will say this, though. Once you get done cooking the bacon, you're not going to need the stove. The rest of it is just assembling it. There we go. Got it plugged in. Beautiful. The phone is charging. Let's give that bacon a flip. Skip. This one's curling a little bit. We'll grab the other piece and kind of straighten it out a little bit. The technique that I talked about earlier, the end that's curling up on me, you want to hold that down with the fork and then the opposite end with the spatula. Hold it down in the heat of that greasy, buttery, beefy loaf. Give it a couple seconds. Boom. And curl up a little bit. Kind of hold that side down a little bit so it doesn't curl up too much. Yeah, nice try, you bastard. We definitely want to make sure the bacon is fully cooked before, you know, too long. I'm going to turn this on so we can get some more light on the subject. Um, it's important that you fully cook your bacon when you're making a bacon cheeseburger. It's just, it's important, you know, food safety and, you know, eating raw bacon is, you know, no. The stove is already plenty hot, so it's not going to take long for this to cook. Seven's a good heat to have for it. There we go, those are just about done. Put fork in the sink, um, put the butter away real quick. Grab a sip of beer. That bacon is cooked. Literally, oh, that's beautiful. Turn the stove off. There's just a splash of grease left in the pan. Let that grease cool off. It'll be used for our next burger. I can uh, transfer the bacon. Make a nice little X with with it. Bacon on top. I'm gonna let that cool off for a second. Take a look at that YouTube. Oh, the bacon is right there. Beautiful. I mean, literally, the bacon is cooked. It's a little bit crispy, but also a little bit chewy. Beautiful. It's past the stage of cooked. There's a little bit of crispiness to it. But not too much crispiness, just a little bit. So right off the bat, you got the start to a delicious patty melt. I mean, this right here, yeah. Okay, now what we need is some cheese, and this is where our This is where we're going to be really immature and make fart jokes while we cut cheese. Literally, I mean literally cut the cheese. Now 
Now, if you can't find sliced cheese in your grocery store and all you have is the cubed, this is what I used on the burger for the live stream. This is a block of Kobe Monterey Jack. Yeah, buddy. Mm. You just smell the beef and the bacon waffle into the kitchen. It's magnificent, YouTube. I'm gonna go ahead and open the cheese real quick. It's a much smaller knife. A friend of mine gave me. Beautiful. Okay, now that we got the uh, the cheese open, we're gonna get the the block out and just carve a cut a small chunk out, and then cut the small the small chunk into smaller chunks. We put the smaller chunks on top of our burger. I like to tear it in half just like that so that when I cut the small chunk out, I can always rewrap it. Let's add this small chunk down onto our cutting board because it's still in the wrapper. Beautiful. And you're thinking to yourself, okay, that's a pretty big chunk. Does that seem excessive? And the answer is no, it'll make sense here in a second. So you get like a chunk like that and just cut it into smaller slices. And you can't really, you can, you can kind of see what I'm doing right here with the way I got the phone position, but that's because it's on the charger and I don't want it to die in the middle of a cooking video. <laughs> Oh, video, excuse me. Beer burps, ladies and gents. So, we're going to take our kitchen knife and we're going to cut the uh, cheese. Into uh, thinner slices. I mean, you cut them as like as thin as you can, you know. There we go. And we're gonna go ahead and stack them on top of the bacon. And sometimes piling, piling the cheese. There we go. There we go. Now I got this. Squish the bacon down on top of your patty so it crumbles a little bit from the crispiness of it. It'll flatten down on top of your beef patty. And you can uh, then pile the cheese on top. Mm. That is some really good cheese, yo. Cracker say what? Yes, I am a cracker. The correct term is saltine American, and yes, we do like cheese. Mm-hmm. Mm. There they are. That's literally all the cheese I needed. I overcut it. But it's an extra slice to munch out on while we're waiting for it to, you know. Once you got the cheese on top of your bacon, now we're going to microwave it until the cheese is all melted on top. Ooh, yeah, buddy. At this point, we're done with our kitchen knife. We can put it in the sink to be washed. We need to grab a uh, clean kitchen fork because we're going to need it for spreading our
condiments. Showing you how I made the delicious bacon cheeseburger for Darth Winnie on my live stream. Now that I got the cheese stacked beautifully, we're gonna center it. Then we're gonna throw it in the microwave so we can melt the cheese on top. And you could melt the cheese in a pan. You know, you put like a little bit of butter underneath and you put a another pan on top to steam it, you know. But then you're getting melted cheese all over your pan. And that melted cheese getting crusted onto your pan's a pain in the ass to clean off. This is why I like melting the cheese in the microwave. You don't get burnt cheese onto your pan while you're trying to put melted cheese on top of your burger patty. Put it in for like a minute, 30. This microwave is pretty powerful, so see like a minute and 34 seconds and just see how, how it looks. There's a certain look I'm going for when I melt the cheese. Trust and believe you'll see what I mean here in a second. Also, if you like the dang cooking videos, subscribe for more. I'm going to show you cool cobras. How I made that dank Darth Linney burger on my live stream. And then conveniently enough, the phone decides, oh, guess what? Low battery. Ha ha. Work around that, why don't ya? Convenient as always. Now, if you are stuck with the cubed cheese like I'm using, you want to stack your slices evenly so that way it doesn't fall off when you microwave it. So you definitely want to watch it. Watch it like a hawk. Once the cheese starts becoming an ooey gooey puddle on top, take it out. Keep in mind the beef and the bacon. save you from getting burnt cheese stuck to your pan, quickly and that's impossible to clean later on. Who we you in at 40 seconds left? That's looking pretty decent. I'm gonna watch it so I don't get too much cheese. If it starts creeping past the bread a little Yep. Okay, 30 seconds left, baby. Literally at 30 seconds left, you can just see that cheese puddled all over the top of the bacon and the beef. Just fucking beautifully, pardon my French. Now you're sitting here going, okay, well, what are we going to do with this uh, this top bun? Well, <laughs> back on the cutting board, we're going to add uh, horseradish barbecue sauce and Doritos. Simple. Easy enough. I mean, that cheese just formed a beautiful, cheesy, gooey, ooey puddle on top. Some of the cheese is a little bit chunky in the middle, but for the most part, it's just oof. I could not have melted the cheese better. That is just perfect. Now, for the horseradish, we have... The uh, extra hot horseradish right here. And the ingredients you see here can be found at your local Walmart or Albertsons or variants of. I got the horseradish right here, which is made from the horseradish plant. The hottest one available. 
I'm gonna crack that open. There it is, YouTube. Yeah, buddy. Oh yeah, that is some horseradish, baby. So now I want to take. I'll show you the daub. Oh, that that I put on there. The dollop. I didn't put as much on Darplinis, but about the same, you know. He likes spicy, I like spicy. A little bit goes a long way. So all that horseradish right there, we're going to take our clean fork that we scooped it out with, and we're going to spread it onto our top bun. Just enough to spread all over the top bun. Literally, that's all you need. Just enough to spread all, uh, split a little bit. I'll get that here in a second. God damn it. The cooking video is going so good, but that's all right. Keep on keeping. I'll get that here in a second. Let's get this burger finished. Okay, so look at that. We got all that horseradish spread over the top, just like that. Let's have a taste of it, shall we? Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's horseradish. Mm. I'm the one eating it, so I'm gonna kind of clean up the sides a bit. I'm the one eating it, so who gives a shit, right? If I'm the one eating it, but like, get all the horseradish off the edge of your bread there. Put the horseradish back. And we have, for the barbecue sauce, we have Famous Dave's Devil's Spit Barbecue Sauce. And these are the two sauces we put on the top bun. Oh, yeah. Seems a bit excessive, but I want to grab another clean fork for this. You know, we're all about cleanliness on the channel, which we're trying to be at least, right? You see how much this barbecue sauce I put on top here? Oh, yeah. Nice little dollop in the middle. That's a little dollop just like that. I want to take my clean fork and I want to take the horseradish and the barbecue sauce and just kind of mix it together on the same top bun. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude. Oh, yeah, buddy. That's spicy, sweet, and savory. <clears throat> Burger's still gonna make you say, damn. All right, this is looking very nice, very nice, very nice. Put the barbecue sauce up because that's what's up. Now, the only thing this burger needs is some Doritos. But not just any flavor, the original, the classic nacho cheese. So, you saw me put the sauce on there. Now, I'm going to put some Doritos on to the top bun. <coughs> oh wait, the combination of that barbecue sauce and that horseradish, that'll do it. That's tasty though, I like it. It's spicy, but it's got a kick to it, you know, it's like, wow, flavor and heat. I'm going to use these uh, nacho cheese Doritos, freshly opened. 
not a sponsor. That crunch we all crave. Oh, shit. Yeah, boy. You know you want it. Get a crunch. Mm. Love Doritos, man. This right here, best chip in the world. Now we're gonna take. Mm. Stop eating them for a second. Mm. Couple of Doritos. Stick them on top. So one, two, three, four, five. Six. Seven. Eight. You got eight Doritos stacked up on there beautifully. Mm. Honestly, I could just eat these by themselves. Mm. These are good, YouTube. Non sponsor. Mm. Doritos. Mm. Yeah, buddy. those up, put them back, scooch the plate over here for a second, I'm going to wash my hands again because I got Doritos dust all over, um, this is not so I grab some toilet paper, that horse rat Right, off the carpet. <laughs> you can't sweep it up, but at this point, okay, get that picked up. There we go. In the trash with that. I'm going to wash my hands. Picking that up. So I get the Doritos dust off my fingertips. The oven's had time to cool off while the burger's sitting for a second. I'm going ahead and wipe out. Some of that grease when I can get of it. Put that in oven cleaner. Uh, ugh, excuse me. Hey, you see this burger in all its glory right here. Looks pretty good. Let's sandwich it. Crush the burger down, crown it. That burger's had time to cool off. That crunch you heard, I put the top bun on, just pushed it down. That you heard it crunch. Cheese is kind of squeezing out right there a little bit, but it's not uh, not coming off sandwich or onto the plate so yeah i definitely call it a sandwich what do you guys think yeah i call it a sandwich um that's exactly
exactly how I made the sandwich for Dark Flinny on my uh, YouTube when he was over here on Sunday doing that live stream. People were probably commenting going, damn, that sandwich was dank. How'd you make that? That's basically how I made it. Step by step. Yo. Now I'm gonna plug the phone in over on my computer real quick. Just for a second. I'm gonna unplug the phone after a bit. It'll give us enough juice to uh well, finish the video at least. If you're filming in a cooking video with your iPhone, sometimes you can't plan on when technology likes to uh, kaplunk on you. You really can't. So you make the best of it. I got stuff that I can use to prop the camera up. Perfect. All right, YouTube. My hands are washed, the burger is prepped. We'll get into eating it here in a second. And chug the rest of this beer, or at least a couple more sips. If people you like the if, if the people out there like the cooking videos, hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell. Pulling a rope, or if it's a carillon, ding. You know the drill. When I made the burger for Darflini, I thought, you know what, I want to make a burger like I would make for myself. Put that passion into it, you know. And that's why I got a 7 out of 10. Keep in mind, Darflini is no stranger to a good burger. You know, he's been around the burger game a bit. So, when you have someone who's experienced different ways to make it, you know, yeah. This might be a little bit spicy for some, but honestly, this would be just, just fine for me. That the cheese melts on that is just beautiful. Let's get a 360 of it before we eat it. And it's cool off enough that I can pick it up. The bottom is not falling apart. It's cool off enough I can pick it up and eat it. It's still warm. You know, the cheese has melted beautifully over the top of it. Uh, excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Like a blanket of tasty goodness. Got that Dorito layer in effect. If you don't like spicy and you want to tone it down a bit, you don't have to use you don't have to use horseradish or barbecue devil spit hot sauce if it's too spicy. You can use whatever you want, ranch, ketchup. But that's the secret to making a delicious patty melt right there. I mean you throw on your favorite chips for a little bit of crunch. Weekend fun, baby. Let's see how it do. What do you think, YouTube? Should we get a bite of it? Let's get a bite of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Spicy. Savory. Yo. The bread dumbs down the heat. The bread, the Doritos, the bacon, the beef, and the cheese. It dumbs down the heat. 
You know, it's got an interesting flavor to it. I'm, I don't know how to describe it, but it's good. Like, would, would I take another bite of it? Yeah, why the hell not? Mm. Hey, y'all, shout out to all the foodies out there on YouTube. All the cooking shows. Got a little bit of heat to it, but it's doable. Mm. Mm. It's doable to the fact that there are Doritos, bacon, cheese, and beef stacked neatly upon this delicious morsel of a sandwich. If you like the delicious cooking videos, subscribe for more. This um, uh, only complaint I have on this was spilling horseradish, which really wasn't much of a complaint because this turned out pretty delicious, actually. The cheese was melted perfect. The Doritos and the bacon are providing a nice crispy delicious crunch. The cheese, oof. It's not bad. I like it. I would definitely serve this again or make it again, you know? Oh. Mm. Now, do you add fried chips to your sandwich? Some people might think that's a bit much. Putting these crispy, you know, putting, do you put Doritos or potato chips on a burger when you eat it? If so, hell yeah. If not, give it a try. Definitely the perfect amount of seasoning on the bread. The heat is mainly coming from the horseradish and the spicy barbecue sauce. For a little midnight snack on the weekends, I'm actually liking this. I wasn't sure how it was going to taste when I made it for my friend, but I'm like, I'll recreate it for my channel and see how it how it do. Actually, yeah, it's not bad. Mm. Oh. Oh, yeah. The heat is still there, but it's not completely dumbed down. That greasy, flavorful love coming from everything else and the crunch from the Doritos. It's helping dumb down the heat a little bit, but it's still there. It's there for a second, and then it just gives way to this rather delicious and interesting taste. You get the, bar the bite from the barbecue towards the end with that buttery love, and you're just like, ooh. Ooh, that's good. Best way to describe it. Mm -hmm. Mm. Honestly, I wasn't hungry. I already ate before. But I'm like... I could squeeze room for a cooking video, see if the fans like it or not. Personally speaking, no complaints making this. I mean, that turned out a lot better than I expected it would. Um, 
Famous Dave's Devil Spit Barbecue Sauce and Horseradish Mixed. The extra hot horseradish at that. Makes for a very spicy and tasty combination. I mean, if you wanted to do it up, you could add jalapenos and pepper jack cheese and really crank up the heat. But if it's too spicy, then you're just scorching your mouth. The nice thing about this burger is it does have a little bit of spiciness to it. But it's not overpowering on the spicy. It's more focused on the flavor and just that, oof, that soul food aspect. I mean, there's definitely a soul food-like quality about it. So uh, would I make it again? Fuck yeah, I would. Hmm. Is it the best burger I've had? Well, hard to say but you can't go wrong with mm, putting beef bacon Doritos and cheese melting it and toasting it between some nice Texas toast oh now if I had the Cobra's cafe this is how, you know, this is the style of burger I would make. Because I could just see customers coming up and being like, Hey man, can I get a, um, a dank Darflini burger? Yeah, I got you. Pull one of these up. You want uh, some fries with that or nachos? Or we also got wings. Oh, let's go with fries. Alright, so they go with the fries. Homemade potato fries. Mm. I've like 44 beers on tap on draft and both Coke and Pepsi products. Thirsty Thursdays, you can mix and match. Get a pitcher of beer mixed with your favorite soda pop for like four bucks. Go in there, eat some dank nachos, eat a burger while you're sitting there macking out and some fries. You're like, yeah, dude, you know. Now, if I had my own restaurant, trust and relief. If I had my own restaurant, it'd be the cleanest restaurant you ever seen. Okay? That's no bullshit. But when I'm trying out recipes for YouTube and I'm cooking it for myself as a bachelor, I guess there's a different feel to it, yes. But even though I was full, I made room for it. Hell yeah. <clears throat> I mean, if you cannot cook your beef and butter, cooking it without, you know, it works. But all the steps I took to making that burger were to make it so fucking unhealthy that it just makes you go, oh yeah, baby. Because my taste buds are going... Party time. My arteries are going, fuck, dude, you better quit eating like this when you're 40 if you live that long. (laughs) 
grab another beer and wash that glorious bastard down. Blah. You know, if you're stuck in quarantine, and then get creative with it, you know. I like horseradish. I like Famous Dave's Devil Spit Barbecue Sauce. I asked our Flinny, do you like horseradish? He goes, yeah, I like it. He tried it on the live stream. You know, we were more about entertaining the fans than what people were saying about it, you know, and people were liking it, you know. And someone in the chat said, hey, Cobra, make Darflinny a burger. So I'm like, all right, let's see what I can do here. And that burger that I just got done eating was the exact same burger that I made, just the way I made it. And um, it was uh, freaking good. I liked it. The yeah, barbecue sauce gave it an interesting twist on the flavor. Like it works with the buttery cheesy goodness. And it also, in my opinion, wor works with the horseradish. But that horseradish gives it a little bit of tartness, just a little bit of a bite to it, like, you know. If you have a bar slash grill type restaurant, Thirsty Thursdays are a great way to bring in customers. It's Friday almost. And if you offer pitchers and beers, uh, bottles of beers and pitchers at a slightly discounted price, excuse me. You know, it gets people excited for the weekend and like, oh, hey, Thirsty Thursdays at da -da 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 -da, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what it is. That's just a smart business. Which means if you can make it to Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and still have customers, boom, you're good to go. Which means you're going to make it through Monday Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Those are your slower days. Now, if I had my own bar, I'd offer karaoke. Have like a Thirsty Thursdays at the Cobra, Cobra's Cafe. Get live karaoke, beer, nachos, pizza, burgers, homemade fries, wings. Yeah, beer, pizza, nachos, wings, homemade fries. That's easy enough to cook. You're a combination of the two. Yeah, customers over here who are munching out on this bomb ass. Handmade stuffed crust pizza that just, oh, so fucking good. You got customers over here who are just mounting down on a burger like, argh, you know, they're not afraid to get messy with it. They're just like, yeah. They get done eating it, they feel like, oh, that was naughty. But they're sitting there wiping the grease and the flavor, and they're like, oh. And then they take a sip of their beer that they paid for. They got a pitcher of beer mixed with their favorite soda pop. They're like, oh, sugar and alcohol, yes. It'd be a cafe where you come to relax and indulge and enjoy yourself. 
And if by serving Coke and Pepsi products, if you're not old enough to drink, you'd also be able to drink soda pop with it. And I'd eat on the regular, you know. Occasionally, occasionally, YouTube at the Cobra's Cafe, I would offer steak Sundays. Well, on Sunday, you come in, eat some steak at a fair but reasonable price. And you pay me, like, hey, you know what? That was a good steak and that was a fair price, and I'm full. Fucking A. Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, what would the slogan be? Take a bite out of hunger? I think that would do it, yeah. Of course, this is just an idea. It's not an actual concept, but... I would follow, I would follow much stricter procedures if I had my own restaurant like that. But if I'm sitting here making a cooking video as a bachelor, or cooking a burger for myself, it's different. People are going to look at me and be like, oh my god, that's gross, or that's gross, or, you know. <laughs> Ew. Now, if you're on a cafe that makes the pizza dough from scratch. They come in a couple hours before they're open and just make several balls of it for prep. Get a couple burger patties prepped. Boom, boom. By the time the early morning lunch rush hits, people are like, I want burgers. People are like, I want pizza. Boom, boom, boom. You got the preformed, never frozen beef on the grill, getting cooked. You got the pizzas going in the oven, getting the orders out. And if you get good enough at it and you're persistent with it and your restaurant's clean, your customer service is friendly, and people go, oh, dude, you gotta check this place out. It's so fucking good. The prices are fair, but, you know, the food's good. So, they're not, you know what I'm saying? It's just finding that balance, you know what I'm saying, YouTube? Because you can make a restaurant last for years. You could have generations of people coming to your restaurant. You know what I'm saying? Based off of those cleanliness, good customer service, good food, and a good atmosphere. People walk in there and they're like, oh, hey, it's so-and-so's place, you know? Oh, fuck yeah, and the food's delicious, you know? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I have a passion to cook. I'm not going to say I'm a fancy chef. I'm not going to sit here and say all this other crap, but I have ideas for food, so I cook it based off of what I know. If I don't know how to cook it, I'll look it up on YouTube. You'll be like, well, this professional cook on YouTube says, this is how you got to cook this particular item. Okay, cool. And then throw it together. Boom. But if you're stuck in quarantine, like I said, get inspired to cook. You're trapped in your house with food. Some of it you just bought on a whims because that's all they had. Make and do with what you got so you can store it together. It might be delicious. Anyways, YouTube. I do thank you for watching this delicious cooking video.
And I'll definitely catch you cool cobras on the flip side. And get this video uploaded to my desktop and that'll do it.